Hello and welcome to this tutorial for Lego Harry Potter Years 1 through 4. In this video we are doing the level 2-5 or we'll follow the spiders. So uh, to start off the level, uh, no matter which way you've completed 2-4, you'll spawn around this area. Uh, in fact, if you did the any percent on the original version of 2-4 where you exit out after the boss fight, you'll land right here. We'll start right there. If you do the uh, no levels only version where you finish the whole level itself, you'll spawn about here. But either way, the next movement is very simple. Uh, player one just makes their way over here. And then we'll go through the door. Bit of a skip in this room. Uh, basically what you can do is you can jump on this railing. So to get down to the door we need to get down to, what you can do is jump on this railing and then just hold left uh, and a little bit down and kind of jump. Uh, I didn't get it right that time. I think I didn't hold enough kind of down left. But what you can do is just jump on here. And there we go. You fall down and you land right by the door. A uh, nice easy way of doing it. Of course if you fail it and you end up about here. It's nice and easy to just jump over the railings. And then go through the door. In this room, you want to have Harry on Lumos, because Harry will Lumos jump up here to go over, and then through the door. That's the quickest way of going through the door. If you're struggling with that a bit, you can Lumos jump onto here. Oh, sorry, just activate Lumos on this bench. Lumos jump over to here, and then either normal jump uh, this way, or just Lumos jump up here. And both of them are relatively consistent ways of doing it. In this room, player one movement. Putting Ron on the pet spell though to make sure he's ready for the next lesson. Or next thing we're going to do, sorry. Which is after this room, it is bridge warp. So I've explained this a little bit before. Basically get Ron in a position like this. Target Ron with Wingardium Leviosa. Put the pet down and then hold down and jump with player two. And you see, there we go, we manage it first try. And then we can go through the door. Now, in the room itself, uh, the first part is quite technical. Uh, this is 1P2C, but it's probably some of the most difficult 1P2C in the game. So what you're going to do, activate Lumos with Harry and Lumos jump up here. That's a nice, easy thing to kind of do with player one. Then with player two, what you want to do is switch to Fang and you have to jump up as well, but we use this kind of greenery around here. Best way to do this, if you're really confident, just jump a little bit forward, and then jump again. If you want to run into it, you can also buffer jump to make it up. Uh, but the thing is, if you're in this position where you're kind of caught running with Fang here, so if you're caught in this running position with Fang, if you drop direction, then jump, then you're able to make it back up. And then with Fang, make it over to here. And then Harry positions himself as near to the tree as possible with... Uh, Harry needs to be on the Lumos spell as well. And from here, there are two different ways of doing this next section. Uh, I'm going to show the easiest one first. And then I'll show the hardest one. Uh, probably at the end of the video. First thing you want to do, drop out Fang. Uh, and then activate Lumos, or activate the vine, sorry, and use a broomstick. And then jump off the broomstick once you're on the other bank and build this. And basically, what we want to do is we want to warp Fang over to here, using the non-player character movement. And then we'll come over to here, activate Lumos, and then Lumos jump up here. And then what we have here is anywhere past here. The moment Harry crosses this tree branch, a camera pan will play. And what we want to do is we want to kind of jump over with Harry and we're going to drop in Fang as quickly as possible. There is a very small chance that Fang will actually warp up to the same level that we are at. This is what happens most of the time. So most of the time Fang will warp here. Uh, which is fine, that's not too much of a problem, but it is a bit slower. If Fang walks, warps up straight away, then you're in a really good position. 
But what you can do now is Harry has got to be on a mobilis and he's trying to get rid of these pixies to then make the dig spot available. There we go. So the dig spot will now be available. What Fang is going to do is from wherever he spawns, you kind of go down and a little bit of right and Fang will make his way over to the right here. And what you want is these mushrooms here, these red mushrooms. Once Fang just goes past those mushrooms, gonna drop out Fang. So as he just goes past about there, we'll drop out and then wait a couple seconds and then start spamming drop in. And Fang should warp up to the higher level like that. Uh, basically, it's a way of getting Fang to jump up, even though we haven't watched the camera pan to spawn the ladder because that camera pan takes about 20 seconds. So it's quicker to do this, even doing it like that. But then, yeah, once Fang's up here, he uses the dig spot and Harry goes through the door. Uh, and now we have the Aragog boss fight. This boss fight is very simple. You've got a, the kind of brown spiders. You've got to just shoot them as quickly as possible because the quicker... Oh, if you shoot them quickly, that gives you the best possible chance of being on the earliest cycle. There is an RNG to this, but it's a tight-ish timer. Um, so you're trying to shoot them as quickly as possible, basically when they spawn. Sometimes they'll have one HP, sometimes they'll have two. But now you see, just kind of on the left below the tree branch, we have got our first purple and black spider. These spiders are a little bit different. They're what we use to deal damage to the boss. And the way we, way we deal damage to the boss is shoot those spiders, but then we actually push the spider underneath Aragog. And then we use Wingardium Leviosa on them. The game registers a hit on the boss, and therefore the cycle ends. So it, it saves like about five seconds each time you do it, because you don't have to manually throw the spider, which takes longer. I'll do it again here. Uh, it can be a bit difficult to maneuver these spiders, it just takes practice really. And then, yeah, last one spawned on player two. And we got the, the best possible cycles here as well, which is always good. And now we have this es escape sequence. Um, my advice here, drop out whichever can or whichever device like is, is hardest to control. Uh, it is quicker to drop out player two here. Uh, also, drop out player one here, which is what I tend to do. But you can drop out player two and then switch and it's fine. Uh, because I'm playing on two controllers, it's it's quicker to just drop out player two. But if you're playing on one controller, one keyboard, it's better if you drop out the keyboard and then keep the controller in. But yeah, I'll drop out player two here and I start moving. Oh, so I drop out player one and I start moving with player two. And this is the escape sequence. The goal of this sequence is to try and avoid getting as many spiders as possible to jump on you. You can end with zero spiders jumping on you, but it's very unlikely. Uh, in the first phase, it's not too bad to avoid them. You kind of go to the right until you get to kind of this narrow bit, and then go to the left side for each of it. This phase is a little bit, or this section is a little bit more complex. So I go down here, and after that first log pile, I move over to the right. And I kind of want to not completely hug the right wall, but stay over to the right for a lot of the time. Um, but I'm going to notice a bit of the way down here, the camera will start to shift. And that's because we're getting near to a jump. And on this jump, you want to make sure you're kind of going in the right direction. So you avoid that spider on landing. Uh, each spider slows you down. You need to mash X to take each spider off. Um, and each spider will basically take a random amount of hits. But that was the second phase. And then we have the final phase here, which is very easy. Uh, it's actually quicker to beat a bike here, but it's not really worth it because of how inconsistent the bike can be. But yeah, that is the level complete. Pretty... Uh, it's it's a technical level to be able to do fast, but... Uh, yeah, I'll now show what it looks like if you do that level a bit faster. Okay, so doing this level again, but a bit faster this time. Uh, just going to set out from here with player one, nice and simple. Player 1 will, of course, make their way over here, and I get Player 1 prepared on Wingardium Leviosa here, or Lumos. Lumos works just as well. 
and then Lumos jump up here and go through the door. Player 2 I get on the pet spell around here. Uh, it doesn't really matter how early or late you do it. I'd like to do it quite early though. And then make my way over to the level itself. Set up for the pet warp here. I am a bit out of practice with this pet warp at the moment. Okay, there we go. And then go through the door. So we start off with some difficult 1p2c. But you can kind of make sure Fang's done his jump first before you then do um, the other version. Or oh, before you do Harry's jump, sorry. Uh, this time around, I'm actually going to show the hardest version of this level. The harder way you can do it. So instead of dropping Feng out there, and then dropping him back in for him to get across earlier, I'm going to challenge my 1p2c a bit more. And I'm going to keep Feng dropped in for the moment. And then activate Lumos with Harry up here. And then we get Harry up there. And I want to position Fang anywhere to the right of that kind of clump of mushrooms, specifically where the ladder is. That's where I want Fang to be. But what we're going to do is then drop out Fang, jump with Harry, and then immediately start dropping in. And you see Fang jumped up immediately. So that's a nice way of saving maybe a couple of seconds or so by doing that, but it does push 1p2c a little bit harder. But then we use the dig spot with Fang and go through. And in this section, want to keep on the best cycle again. I believe it's four spiders before the purple and black spider in the first phase. Is the best cycle? Yeah. And then it's two in the next two phases. Sometimes the spiders take two hits of damage for some reason, but you can still usually get rid of them in time without it being too much of a problem. So I drop out player 1, and I'm going to hug the right for this first part, until we pass kind of this narrow area. And normally I'd go straight to the left, um, somehow we didn't collect that spider. I don't know how, because the game threw me to the right there. But then after this pile of logs, I'll cut in between, and hug the right side for this bit. Make sure I fall down on the right side of those stacks of logs. And then pretty soon there's a jump. We did get spidered, which is annoying. So I make sure I'm going to the right off the jump because most of the time that stops that spider getting us. And then I like to go really over to the right here because that's just a bit of a corner cut more than anything. And then through here, skip this cutscene, and then the last bit. The bike is going crazy in the background, but that's normal. And that's the end of the level. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.